everybody, welcome back to T News Live at the Aviation Festival, presented by JetBlue Technology Ventures and sponsored by Travel Air. My name is Martin Cowan. I'm editorial director for T News, and I am talking to Aidan Brogan, who's the CEO of Datalex. Aidan, thanks very much for taking the time to join us. I know you've had a busy day and a half, and you've got another busy day and a half afterwards. So thanks for squeezing 10 minutes with T News into your agenda. So um, where to start? Well, let's. Let's, let's start with China. I mean, you've been active in China for a number of years. You've got some interesting partnerships there. You're working with a number of the big airlines in China, and we haven't really talked about China much today. So I'm just wondering, you know, just give an idea about the, the scale of your you know, presence in China, and also maybe what it is that you're learning from dealing with Chinese airlines Very that good. you're feeding back into your other clients. Great. Good afternoon, Martin. Thanks. And good afternoon to the listeners. Yeah. Uh, China represents a phenomenal opportunity, I would say, for everybody involved in travel and travel technology. Um, we opened our office there four years ago uh, with relocating one person from our office in Dublin. Um, and I was in uh, Beijing two weeks ago and we moved to our new facility. Uh, today we've over 35 people uh, in Beijing and a city called Wuhan. Uh, we have six airlines live using our technology, and we have a partnership with a local software company called Newsoft, which brings us local scale and capability. Uh, in terms of the size of the opportunity, um, IATA have predicted that the number of people traveling by air will double from about 4 billion to over 8 billion in the next 20 years. Um, in China alone, that will go to about 1.7 of the 8 billion will be from China. So in terms of passenger numbers, we see phenomenal growth. Uh, more importantly, around technology and the use of technology is moving at a far greater rate in China, uh, let's say, than outside of China. Um, this is driven primarily by innovation around uh, new methods of payment and new methods of social media like WeChat, uh, and obviously the big uh, retailers like Alibaba and then Ctrip in the travel space. So I think what we're seeing is the level of uh, innovation is faster, and the barriers to market expansion, let's say, that exist outside, like the GDSs and regulation, uh, don't exist to the same extent in China. So that pace of activity and innovation is a lot faster. Okay, I mean, it's interesting, there's a couple of things that you mentioned there that I haven't heard um, today, so I'm going to maybe talk to those about that with sort okay. of payments and social media. So, yep. I mean, the, in, in China, you know, the social media, the WeChat and the Weibo are, yep. are massive. Are they? Are they social media platforms as we in the West know it, or are they more sort of commercial platforms? Is there more commerce going on? Yeah, I think it's media? interesting. I think they're, they're, they're both. Uh, so WeChat uh, is a sort of an overall uh, ecosystem with subsystems for messaging, communications, uh, voice messaging, but also payments. So you have WePayments. Um, so they're much greater ecosystems. So they're, in addition to being social uh, applications or networks, they're actually commercial applications. So you can buy products and services on things like WeChat, uh, and obviously then all of the other uh, channels as well, like Alibaba. And then in terms of the payments, I mean, you talk about sort of social, social platforms as a payment platform, but then also in terms of the, yeah. the mechanics of the payments, I mean, is, yeah. is, is, I mean, China does have its own rules and regulations around payments, but is there anything that you're learning from that, that you're, you're sort of re repurposing for the, the payments yeah. platform outside of China? I, 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 what we're seeing is the dominance of the large payment uh, credit cards, like obviously Amex, Visa, MasterCard, are not dominant in China. Um, and there's new forms of payment. So uh, we talked about WeChat, but also that people are connecting directly to their bank accounts. So earlier on in Europe, uh, there was new legislation introduced this year to allow uh, uh, supply or retailers connect directly into consumers' bank accounts. That has existed for many years in China. So let's say the barriers again to new forms of payment have not been in place, and therefore we're seeing a lot more innovation and, and uh, payment uh, technologies come out. Oh, okay, that's interesting. So maybe just sort of shifting shifting gears a bit and maybe coming into um, more familiar, familiar territory, the whole idea around sort of retailing, yep. merchandising, personalization. I mean, you were, you were there at the beginning of that. I mean, it's one of the, the early adopters yep. of the you know, theory and practice of, of yep. retailing. I mean, what, what benefits do you, are you seeing from having been in the space 
well, for quite a while. Yeah, what we identified uh, a number of years ago was at a basic level that airlines would sell and engage uh, more and more directly with their customer base. Um, and we saw that evolving from selling basic product through ancillaries and now into full retailing. So uh, two things I would say is one, airlines are digital businesses. Um, and they're digital businesses, not because they may or may not decide to be one, it's because that's where their consumers exist. And the pace of that digital transformation is growing faster and faster. The second element is retailing. I think the challenge that airlines have is the industry has been designed around a commodity, airlines selling a ticket. So the ability to differentiate their product from different airlines has been quite limited in the model that was designed. The, uh, benefit that they have now from digital, digital channels and retailing is they now can differentiate their product and segment their customer base, offer a broader range of products and services, give more choice to the consumer, which will ultimately result in higher revenues and higher margins for the airlines because they can sell more products and services. Um, the other challenge we're seeing is the dominance of the platform, the digital retailers, the platform economy, uh, people like Amazon, so uh, last year, uh, about 46% of uh, e-commerce sales in the US were through Amazon. Uh, this year, it's going to be over 49%. So we're seeing a, a strong growth in, in the platform economies like Amazon, um, Airbnb, Alibaba, Uber. And what we're seeing is that airlines uh, are reacting to this by engaging uh, with digital platform providers like Dataflex to bring in that capability, take back control of their offer management, and again, provide the customer more choice and value in services. Okay, I mean, that's, that's an interesting perspective. I mean, and one other you know, familiar theme from, from today's conversations is, is the, the whole idea around data and, and data science. And one of the things, again, one, one step removed, or maybe two step removed from sort of like the, the data science industry, I'm just wondering, you know, is, is, there, is there a danger that data is almost becoming commoditized? I'm thinking if I've got a, a big data lake here and I've got data scientist A and data scientist B, how, how can those two different data scientists get a different actionable insights yeah. from what is basically the same data? Or is there different data lakes for different scientists? I'm just wondering where the differentiation in the, in the use of the data yeah. is going to come from. I think if you, if you look at it from a consumer-centric perspective, uh, and particularly in the digital world, what people want is relevant contextual data uh, available to them immediately. So I suppose that is the use case, or that's the business case. Uh, how data is interpreted and how it's applied is really down to the brand and to the company or to the airline that uses that. So I think you know, th there is a risk that big data and data analytics, I think, as you say, becomes commoditized. I think the important thing is, what's the business case or use case uh, that the business wants to use the data for, and do they have the capability to actually extract the information from that data? So the big data in, in its own right actually is not of value, it's the extraction that you can get from it is where the real value is. Okay, so it's almost, almost an ability to to, to, to to catch the fish in the data lake that you want to eat, if that's not a ridiculous yeah, metaphor. Yeah, no, I, I, think, I think what's important is that the, 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 it's not the volume of data, it's the correct data. Yeah. So the idea of having big data and a data lake, yeah. actually we think is, is sort of uh, maybe the underlying capabilities, yeah. but actually it's the extraction of the right data at the right moment in time to influence the customer interaction is actually what is important, or okay. is the business case. Okay, well that's, uh, that's an interesting 10 minutes, Aidan. Thanks very much, as I said, you've got a busy day. Thanks for very good. taking the time to shoot the breeze about China, early adoption, and data commoditization. That was quite a, an interesting 10 minutes. So again, Great. thank you Appreciate very much. It, and um, yeah, I'll see you around. Thank you, thank very, you very much, much for joining. This is Martin Cowan, this is T News Live at the Aviation Festival, and this is me saying goodbye, but I will be back shortly. Thank you. <laughs>